Hey, what's going on guys? Just wanted to give you a quick video on probability rules. Uh, this is based off of your simple events and even your compound events. But before we get into those probability rules, want to make sure that we understand the simple event of probability. So we're looking at a simple event in probability. So the probability of an event occurring, we're looking at this simple fraction. So at the top on the numerator, you're looking at the number of outcomes in E that you are considering all over the total number of outcomes in that event, okay, which is simply your sample space, okay. So in other words, and some books may write it like this, where they have the number in E over the number in the sample space. So let's say for instance, or for example, uh, you're looking for uh, the probability of pulling a heart in a deck of cards. So I'm looking at the probability of a heart, okay, in a deck of cards. And as you know, there are 52 cards in a deck. And there are four suits in the deck of cards and there's 13 cards in each suit. So that means you have 13 hearts, 13 diamonds, 13 spades, 13 clubs, okay? So in this case, I'm looking at the probability of me getting a heart. So I'm looking at 13, so that's the number in that event that I'm looking at, all over the total outcome, or total number of outcomes, which is 52. So I'm simply looking at, well, a fraction of 13 out of 52 or simply one out of four. So that means I have a 25% chance that I'm gonna pluck a heart out of the deck of cards or that deck of 52 cards, okay? So that's what a simple event is. Now we can move on to our probability rules. Because otherwise, if we don't know our simple events of probability, then the probability rules wouldn't really make much sense. But dealing with our rules, we have eh, really two, two rules for different situations. So one would be the addition rule. The other would be the multiplication rule. So with the addition rule, and I'll look, you know, let's look at uh, addition rule one, okay? where you're dealing with two events that are mutually exclusive. In other words, neither event occurs at the same time. Okay, a one doesn't really have a bearing on the other. Okay, so in this case, we have this addition rule of probability of A or B happening, where we write it out as a simple event of A, or the probability of event A happening, plus the probability of B happening. Okay, so again, this is, these are mutually exclusive events. So again, mutually exclusive events, which again means that one does not have any bearing on the other. Okay, how does it work? Well, let's assume for a minute that we say, okay, I want to look at the six out of a six-sided die. Okay look something like this I don't know I'll just you know draw it like that okay and I'm looking for I don't know I'm looking for let's say heads on a two-sided coin okay so I just want a head on a two-sided coin so oh, sorry about that so I have a little bit of a face there whatever all right there you are okay there you go okay so I'm looking at the head of a two-sided coin. So I want to find the probability here. So again, one really shouldn't have any bearing on the other. So I can look at it as the probability of a six or the probability of a head. So I'm looking at it as a probability of six plus the probability of me getting a head. So as we know, I have a one in six chance in getting a six off of the six-sided die because as you know each one have you know are equally likely to happen so again if I got a one it'd be one six if I got a two it'd be one six as well if I got a three 
be one six all the way up to the six where each one is one sixth. Okay, so I have a one sixth chance of me getting uh, a six off of that six sided die. Okay, now what about the probability of a head? Well, the probability of a head and the probability of tails basically are equally likely one half for each one. So for the head, I just simply write it as one half. Okay. And if we understand our LCDs, in this case, six should be it. Okay. I can add the two together. I have four out of six or simply two thirds. Okay. So that is the probability of me getting uh, a six off of a six sided die or a head. Okay. Now let's look at the or for a second. Let's look at that language for just one, one hot second here. So look at the language here. So with the or, and as you notice it, and you've seen this before, believe it or not, if you are familiar with your sets, if you are familiar with your sets, okay, or kind of contains with, you know, with the test. So look at it. It's like, okay, set A or set B. Some questions may ask like, well, you know, what elements are in A or in B? Okay. And you may have a list of elements for each set. So what do you do? You just combine them all. Or is the union. Union just means do combine. So you're adding. Okay. So with or, you're going to add. All right. That's the language you're going to see when it comes to probability. That's what that means. So or means to add in this case. Okay. So that was your addition rule one. Now, what about addition rule two? So we have addition, whoops, addition rule two. Okay. So in this case, it's the same as addition rule one with one slight uh, addition to it. And this is what it looks like. So again, I have probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. So now you're dealing with non mutually exclusive events. In other words, you might be dealing with events where A and B may occur at the same time. So let's take let's take a card, a 52 deck of cards for another example, 52 card deck. OK, let's try that. And let's say, for instance, I wanted to find the probability of, let's say, a seven or eh, seven or a spade. Let's say if I want to find that. OK, seven or a spade. OK, so I'm going to write it out as I would see fit according to the addition rule. Again, non mutually exclusive. And in some ways, I like to call it inclusive, but I'm going to call it non mutually exclusive. That's what it is. OK. The probability of A and B happening. Okay. So how does this work? Okay. Well, we know, first of all, when it comes to finding a seven in a card deck, there are four sevens because you have seven of hearts, seven of diamonds, seven of spades, and of course, seven of clubs. All right. So that would simply be four out of 50. Two, okay. Add it to the number of spades, which again is a suit. And just like in the previous example where there were 13 hearts, same for spades. There are 13 spades, like so. So you have 13 out of 52. Now, notice when I mentioned about the seven, while well, I was talking about there were four sevens, I said there is a seven of hearts, seven of diamonds, seven of spades seven of clubs. Okay. Now, when does this occur when both a seven and a spade happen? Well, once, because you do have a seven of spades. That's a time when both A and B happen at the same exact time. So you can almost look at it as an intersection. Again, if you're dealing with your sets, so you're going to have a seven of spades. So again, that's just that one card out of all of the 52 cards that I'm going to have that occurrence happen where I have both a seven and a spade. So we can do our math. Now, before I do the math, why do we have that, um, that part in there? Well, look at it like this. 
if we just went ahead and just added the 4 to the 13, right? Believe it or not, when we're dealing with this probability here and this probability here, now, again, you're dealing with a 7 of spades in this probability, okay? A 7 of spades. Also, you're dealing with a 7 of spades here. So it gets counted twice, okay? We do not want a certain uh, event counted twice. Otherwise, the probability is thrown off. So that's why we look at this part here of uh, situations where the event may occur at the same time. So that's the reason why we take that one out. So we should get a straight probability here. So if we add these, we should get what? 4 plus 13, you get your 17 minus 1, which would be 16 over 52. Okay. And then if we were to reduce it down, I do believe we should end up with 4 over 13. And you can look at that for yourself. If you factor 4 out of 16, you're going to get 4. 4 out of 52, you're going to get 13. So this should be my probability right here. 4 out of 13. Uh, if I'm looking at getting uh, the, uh, finding a probability of a 7 or a spade. Okay, that is your addition rule 2. Now, let's look at multiplication, shall we? So you have another probability rule in multiplication. So this is your multiplication. All right, multiplication rule one. Okay, so with your multiplication of rule one, you're dealing with two events that are independent of each other. So if you're dealing with two events that are independent of each other, you're looking at this notation here. P of A and B, which is going to equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B. Okay. So again, let's take another, let's use the same example of, let's say, a six-sided die and a coin. All right, that seems to be the favorite, I think, for a lot of these books. So I want to find the probability of me, let's say, getting, uh, I'll just say a two, and let's say a tails this time. So again, I'm looking for a two in a six-sided die. So this is a six-sided die, okay? And it tells from a two-sided coin, okay? So I'm looking at the probability of getting a two plus the probability of getting a tail. So with the multiplication, and again, you're dealing with two independent events, all right? They don't have anything to do with each other, all right? One does not have bearing on the other. So again, the probability of two, again, this one-sixth, Okay, times uh, the probability of the tail, which is one half. And if you're familiar with multiplying your fractions, you're going to end up with one over 12. Okay, well, how does that look? Let's map that out. Let's map it out. So, again, I'm looking for the probability of a two and getting a tail. Okay, so let's kind of look at a little bit of a tree here. Okay, so if I'm dealing with that, and again, I'm looking at a six-sided die. So again, I say if I have a six-sided die, so I have one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, then I flip a coin. Each one has a head or a tail, right? Like so. just like so, okay? So I have those possibilities, right? So if I write each one down, I would have, let's say, a one and a head, one and a tail, two and a head, two and a tail, three head, three tail, four head, four tail, all right? Five head, five tail, Six head, six tail. Okay? So look at how many I have. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Twelve total outcomes. So that's my sample space. These are all my possible outcomes. But we want the one where it says they want a two and a tail, which would be this one. 
So that's my 1 out of 12. So with the probability of me just dealing with the 2 and the tail of a two-sided coin is just 1 out of a possibility of 12, as you can see there. That's the reason why it is what it is. Okay? Now, moving on to your multiplication rule 2. Multiplication rule 2. Now, what does this look like? Well, same as the first, probability of A and B, then you have the probability of A. However, now you're dealing with the probability of B given A. Okay, that's what you're looking at. So now you're dealing with two dependent events where now one has bearing on the other. Okay, so since probability occurred, probability A occurred first, okay, somehow it affected B. So in some examples, you may see when it comes to a bag of marbles, you may say something like, okay, let's say if you had in a bag of 13 marbles, let's say seven were green, six were red. Okay, so you first say, well, I'm looking at, the, let's say, the probability of uh, pulling a green marble out of the bag. Let's say a green marble. Yeah, a green marble out of the bag. So that would be one out of the total of 13, right? Oh, excuse me, the seven out of the total of 13, because you're looking at seven green marbles out of that 13. Okay, I take one out, okay, and it does not get replaced. So as they say, without replacement. Okay, so now I went from 13 marbles down to 12. So then you can ask like, okay, now I want to find the probability. Uh, so first I say I want the probability of finding a green, uh, we're pull, pulling a green marble and a red marble. So I go from now seven out of 13 times six because there's six red. Okay. A red marble. Okay. So I take the six out of uh, now the 12. So again, and I write this out. So again, I'm looking at 13 marbles in a bag. Okay, marbles in a bag. Let's use this example for a second. And out of the 13, I was saying seven are green, seven are green, and let's say six are red. Okay, so let's look how, let's see how this looks. So again, I wanna ask that question of, well, what's the probability of me getting all right, getting a green marble and and a red marble. Okay, what's the probability of me getting those? So, again, you're pulling it, and this is again. I write to make sure I make uh, put this in here without replacement. Okay, so that language you see some kind of language that denotes that. It's just like if you're eating fruit and you know, you're trying to find a probability of, let's say, getting an apple or a pear or something like that. And you eat the fruit. You don't eat it and put it back in. <laughs> you eat it and you go about your, about your business. Okay. So let's write this out. So again, let's see how this looks. Whoops. Uh, changed up on me. But I'll bring it back. No problem. So the probability of red, probability of red given a green was pulled okay so let me take this out let me replace that okay here you go so here's how it looks here's how it looks so again I'm looking at the probability of me getting a green so again that is 7 out of 13 so I'm looking at 7 green 6 red okay so 7 out of 13 okay now I go back in and I say you know what I want to find me a red marble Okay, I'm sorry, not plus, I put, put plus in there, excuse me. Pardon me with that, I just realized that. It's not plus. Okay, multiplication. Okay, so, so now I'm looking at now the probability of me getting a red marble. Now again, 
with our replacement. So that means one marble was taken out and thrown somewhere. So it was taken out of the bag. It was not put back in the bag. So I went from, again, 13 marbles down to 12 now. But my six marbles are still intact on the red side because I pulled out a green first. But the total number got changed. The total number got changed. So when I do my trusty math here, I'm going to end up with these numbers here. 7 times 6, of course, as we know, is 42. 13 times 12 is 156. And when you reduce that down, you're going to end up with 7 over 26. All right, and this should be your probability of getting a green marble and a red marble. And this is assuming you do not replace the first marble. Okay, so that would be your multiplication rule two. Again, these are two dependent events, dependent. All right, again, one has bearing on the other. Now let's look at a couple of examples. where we can eh, use some of these rules here. So let's look at this first one here. So we have there are five nickels, four dimes, and five quarters in your pocket. You randomly pick a coin. It is a nickel or a dime. Well, first things first that I'm seeing is this or. So that means I have to add. So it's going to be one of my addition rules. Now. Believe it or not, when it comes to your addition rule one and your addition rule two, you can almost forget the first rule. Because really, when it comes to probability, you may have situations where uh, two events may not happen at the same time. And you'll see that in this one. So I'm going to use that probability rule. And really, I can technically use the first one, but I actually want to sh show you using the second one, the second addition rule. Okay. Now here we go. So I'm looking at the probability of finding a nickel or well randomly picking a nickel or a dime. Okay. I look at the probability of a nickel plus the probability of a dime minus well, the two happening at the same time. Okay. So first off, let's see. So I have a nickel here and I have, looks like I have five nickels for that probability. Out of how many coins? It looks like it's going to be 14 total for the sample space because I have five nickels, four dimes, and five quarters. So you can look at it as five plus five, which is 10, plus four, which is 14. Okay, so I have five nickels out of 14, all right? A dime, which would be four out of 14, minus, is there ever an instance where you're gonna get a, a nickel and a dime at the same time? Answer is no, so that goes to zero, okay? So again, we really could have used the first addition rule, but really I would suggest just sticking with remembering one addition which would be addition rule two you'll know when to when to uh, either use that very last part or not you'll know so hopefully there's not a dime and a nickel you know pressed to each other accidentally you know that would kind of throw things off but we're assuming that doesn't happen <laughs> so in this case a nickel or a nickel and a dime can happen at the same time okay unless you're dealing with some sort of you know multiplication but in this case they're not gonna there's there's no intersection okay so that's why in that case it's going to be zero so we we'll just simply add the two five plus four which is nine over fourteen and we cannot or there is no way to reduce this down so that would be my probability of well picking a nickel or a dime out of the four nickel I'm sorry the four dimes five nickels out of a total of 14 okay so that was addition rule one here's another example so this time just like we did before a bag contains three red marbles 
and for blue marbles. So the first example I gave you, seven green, six red. But in this one, they changed it up. Now check this out. We have the four red marbles, four blue marbles. You randomly pick a marble, then pick a second marble without returning the marbles to the bag. All right, here's again the language, without returning the marbles to the bag. Both marbles are red, okay. So it looks like we're gonna be dealing with the second multiplication rule. This multiplication rule where we have probability of A and B, which is equal to probability of A times the probability of B given A. This part, and you will see this down the line, where you're dealing with a conditional probability. All right, so with your conditional probabilities, again, these are two dependent events where one has bearing on the other, okay? So let's look at this. So again, I'm looking at the probability of a red and a red, okay? That's what I'm looking at. So the probability of a red, okay, times the probability of a red given that a red marble was already picked, okay? So for our sample space, it looks like we have a total of three and four, seven marbles, okay? So let's look at this. So if I look at the probability of red, because it did say both marbles are red, okay, when I pick two, okay? So with the number here, it looks like I have, what, three out of, again, three and four, seven, okay? Multiply that to another, if I do a second, so again, the first marble was pulled out, not replaced. The second marble was pulled out, not replaced. We're assuming that they're both red. Okay, so again, since they were not replaced without returning the marbles, now I went from three marbles down to two, and my sample space went from seven down to six, and now we multiply. Okay, so in this case, if you want to do your cross cancellation, you can. This is one and two. And of course, these we reduce out, all right? So that's gonna be one and one. So it looks like I'm gonna have a probability of one out of seven, okay? And that's as far as I can go. That's as far as I can go. Okay, so again, that is, this is the addition rule two. I'm sorry, not addition rule, excuse me multiplication rule two. That's what that is. So again, when it comes to your multiplication rule two, you'll know when. So anytime you see language of and, okay, and I will show you another example, all right, to show you like what language that you're looking for. So here is another example using multiplication rule two, where again, you see the language here. So as you read it, it says, okay, you randomly select one piece of fruit and eat it, okay? You eat it, so that means that you do not return it back to the basket, because that's what they're saying, okay? You select one piece of fruit and you eat it. Then you randomly select another piece of fruit, okay? Both pieces of fruit are apples. So in other words, the probability of an apple and an apple. So again, multiplication rule two. So that means you have a condition there. So if I have probability of A and A. So I have probability of an apple, sorry, multiplication of A given A, okay? So I'm looking at six apples, eight peaches, so six and eight should give me 14. So I have a sample space of 14, okay? So again, apple, six apples, 
multiply that to another set of apples, which again, if I'm eating one, my number of apples uh, goes down as well as the total number of pieces of fruit goes down. So it went down to 13. And now I went from six apples down to five. Okay, there you go. So if I multiply these two down, again, if you want to reduce your fractions, you can. So this should be three, this should be seven. So I'm looking at 15 over 91 there, because of course seven times 30, well, seven times three is 21. You know, add that, you know, well, you know how to do that. So there you are. And I shouldn't, there yeah, should be no way to reduce that down. So I have a 15 and 90 once chance, if you want to read it like that, of me eating uh, my first two pieces of fruit being apples. Okay, so again, that's that multiplication. All right, multiplication or multiplication rule two. This is multiplication rule two. So again, you're looking for that language where it's going to either be like without replacement or the word and because, and I'll write this out now since I mentioned it, and means to multiply. Okay, that's what that means. And I'm sorry, not add, excuse me. And means to multiply. Okay, and means to multiply. So in this case, it's almost like saying an apple and an apple. That's what you're dealing with there. So that's your multiplication rule too. So hopefully the rules uh, make a little bit more sense to you beforehand. Uh, if you were learning it before and it really didn't make much sense. Uh, really when it comes down to those rules, just pay attention to the language. That's it. Once you know the language, everything is pretty much simple from that point on. All right. So if you like this video, definitely uh, leave me a comment and uh, subscribe down below there. Uh, more videos are coming up when it comes to probability as well as probability distributions. Okay, so definitely check those out. All right, but in the meantime, practice, 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 study, 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 and I'll see you next time. All right, take care.